welcome back to another film film number 100 <laughs> yeah we've met the uh, the hundred milestone hey what a place to what a place to make your hundredth film now I got this permission I say it's a new permission but uh, I got this permission a couple of years ago and I remember when I when I got it I came down I came down it first week and had a, had a wander about and it showed some really good potential and then I don't know I think Covid happened and I just I just never came down it's not far from my house either it's only it's only a few miles it's uh, crackers really the fact that I've not been down anyway I was thinking the other night about uh, you know what are we going to do for me next film and I thought I'll go and try that permission out again anyway got in touch with Farmer and happy days yeah help yourself so I came down last night and there were loads of hers, loads of brown hers about, which were, uh, I love photographing hers, they're hard, you know, they're a good test of your field craft. So I thought tonight we'll come down. I got a few pictures last night and a bit of footage, but where they were, they were on, they were in, in a grassy field and it was like a bowl, if you will. There were three of them. And I, you know, I did a, I did a bit of stalking and got up to them but it just, I don't know, the, the images, they didn't, I don't know, they weren't doing it for me. <laughs> anyway, after I'd, uh, I'd, I'd managed to get some footage in that, I mean, I'll put them on, uh, see what you think. They were just out special. The, I don't know, the, the background, just the grass, it, they were rubbish. So I had a wander down and there's a couple of stubble fields and I just, I saw a couple working their way down the fence line and I thought they would be fantastic because the, the orientation of the, of the field and with the, you know, the, the setting sun, I thought they'd be the images to get. So that's what we're gonna go for tonight. Well, hopefully, fingers crossed, that's what we're gonna try and get. So I'm in, a, I'm in a bit of a valley now at the moment with a brook in it. And then there's a field that I wanna photograph in and then there's another field. The wind's blowing this way. The field that I want to shoot at is over there. So I'm kind of circumnavigating my way around because the wind's blowing this way. Uh, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to spook them because they're twitchy, you know, big time. So we're going to, we're going to get right down to the bottom of the field. The sun, I don't know, we've, we've got about three hours before sunset, so plenty of time. There's a couple of ways we can do this. You can do it in a hide if you want. But the thing is, if you want to start stalking them, if the, the herd goes off in a different direction, you might want to start stalking them. So your goose then, you don't want to be getting out of the hide. And I found in a hide, a lot of the time, it kind of restricts your peripheral vision. So the way we're going to do it tonight, we're going to get togged up with, uh, we're going to put with 3D camo suit on. I've also brought my ghillie jacket. So we're going to chuck the ghillie jacket on. We've got the ghillie cover for the lens and the camera. And we're going to use the the little eye footage, um, you know, the the monopod. Well, not the monopod. We're going to use the eye footage, the little Cobra Three, the small tripod with the video head on, and uh, yeah, see how it goes. I mean, I'm hoping just to get nestled down by the side of the fence, but hopefully they'll do what they did last night and just work their way down, and they'll come to me. So who knows we'll see but what a beautiful evening it's fantastic I've just put a nice little row book up actually still with a bit of velvet on so yeah it'd be nice to get some pictures of him but we'll see so yeah we'll get down there get togged up get the camo on you know we like a bit of camo and uh, see if we can get some brown hair pictures come on
and it was at this point where I lost the whole soundtrack to the film but we'll do this in studio so all I'm basically talking about is the amount of camo that I tend to use in a circumstance like this get the ghillie cover on the, on the camera it gives you a massive advantage don't forget you're thinking of the profile that you're keeping when you're crawling on the ground the hair isn't going to see a lot of you to be honest so we've got the uh, we've got the ghillie jacket on we've covered the uh, the hands up got our lucky gloves on and a massive consideration is your face cover that face up so we've got the the balaclava 3d head cover if you will and we've got that on We've decided to go with a 500mm f4 and I'm also using a 1.4 teleconverter because it's a, a relatively new permission to me I don't know how twitchy these hairs are so I just need that extra reach advantage of the, the 1.4 converter and if I can't get that close I can always go into crop mode as well so that's us all geared up time for a nice long stalk across that field So this first demonstration, this is technique one, and this is using the small tripod and the video head. This is not a quick way of moving. You've basically just got to hold the stem of the tripod in one hand and then use your other arm as support and slowly but surely make your way across that field. This is ideal for video work. You've got that stability of the tripod and that nice smooth movement of the video head. Like I said though, you ain't going anywhere quick using this method. Technique number two is using a beanbag. This is a quicker way of moving and maintains a lower profile. All you're doing is grabbing both sides of the bean bag as a support for the camera and again edging your way across that field. It's a good idea to use the flip screen on the camera because sometimes the profile is so low to the ground it's difficult to get your head down to the viewfinder. Just gives a really nice aspect though and you get those nice blown out foregrounds and that lovely image separation. Wow, <laughs> that was a that was an arduous. Oh. That was an arduous stalk. Oh. I must have crawled about oh, 200 meters easily. I ditched that about a quarter of the way along, 
I ditched it and I'd, I'd luckily I'd dropped the bean bag a bit further that way where I started crawling so I came back for the bean bag I wanted to get as low as possible without you just sat a little bit higher up that's perfect for if you just led there and they're waiting for you to come to to you but when you're crawling I just find it a bit easier you can still do it with that but you just set up a little tiny bit you know maybe another eight ten inches higher up so to give you maximum concealment you're better off being as low down as you can and then utilize your rear screen sometimes you're that low down you can't get your head down enough to to look through the viewfinder so i find it's a massive advantage to use that that little flip screen and happy days you're not you're not craning your neck then so i got i don't know maybe maybe 50 yards off it and it were relaxed it were proper relaxed it was just chilling out like it was falling asleep and i thought it were going to come towards me but it weren't startled, I didn't spook it, and it just lolloped off the other way. So, <laughs> one of them, innit? So I think what we'll do now, I noticed last night there's a patch of grass. I mean, this field's bare, to be honest. It's, uh, you know, there's no, no goodness in it at all, but around the edges, you've got some nice fresh grass and weeds coming through. And I spotted them just chomping on them last night. So, there's a gate hole, I'm gonna sit there, We'll get cammed up and uh, yeah, see if we get any joy that way. <laughs> All right. Hey. Hey. There we go folks, film number 100 in the can, yeah got a got a few decent images there at the end, just ended up changing tack really, like I said before we, uh, I sacked off the little tripod and the video head because it was just, I don't know, it was just sat up a little bit tall, um, not so bad if you, like I said, if you sat there you're waiting for them to come to you it's different you know you can you can put a bit of extra coverage over yourself you know you can put a full ghillie blanket or a, a scrim net cam on net whatever over the top of you and you just sat tight get set up against the hedge uh, so that you you know your outlines broke up you're not silhouetted uh, but yeah yeah good good couple of stalks that i said last night we came down the pictures i got last night they were just i don't know not so good really because the backgrounds weren't nice and it, it does it makes a difference i think it does anyway um yeah a bit of a stalk on the on the stubble field and then this last stalk now on this uh like rashy grass if you will and 
yeah a few uh, a few nice stills so a good one to finish off on <laughs> yeah right that's it for this one thanks very much for watching to all you out there who follow the channel and uh, subscribed and you know put comments on the support is so appreciated it's fantastic i never thought i'd uh, you know end up getting to a hundred films <laughs> i was nervous about making one actually <laughs> but uh, no it's been fantastic it's a great journey and uh, thanks very much for all your support yeah it's much appreciated drop any comments in the uh, in the comments box and i'll always try my best to get back to you but from uh, from her country up in lancashire thanks very much for watching and we'll see you on the next one <laughs>